Now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan, coming to you from the National Weather Service in Alaska region on this Sunday, February 2nd, Groundhog Day 2025. And we're going to jump right into things. I have plenty to talk about today. It is Groundhog Day, and uh, certainly of note, we have Arctic high pressure centered over northwestern Canada, and that's going to stick around for a while. Coldest air has been over the eastern interior along the Elkan border and in through the Panhandle with those gusty outflow winds. Good news is the cold, some of the cold we saw here three, four days ago that came across the central interior has moderated a bit. And the core of that Arctic air is actually gonna be heading southeastward across Canada down into parts of the northern lower 48 in the week ahead. But it has caused uh, for the storm track to be a little further westward uh, from the North Pacific up across the Aleutians into the Bering and then some fronts brushing the west side of the state. So that is kind of going to be the pattern here. Now through this upcoming week, I think it will shift out a little bit by the time we get in the next weekend and the following week. But nevertheless, it's going to be a hold pretty, uh, pretty stable here. So above normal temperatures and precipitation will be possible along areas of the west coast. Whereas uh, colder, seasonably cold temperatures and drier weather for uh, especially southeast, including the Panhandle. Well, looking up there along the Bering Strait, one of these places that has experienced some milder temperatures. Uh, we've seen readings around or just above freezing. Whales, windy, little mix of some light snow, maybe a little sleet or a bit of rain mixed in and a little light fog, 32 degrees. There is a winter weather advisory for that area as we go through tonight into tomorrow. There could be inch or two of snow with some stronger gusty winds and blowing snow. Now, if you recall last weekend, McGrath got pounded with an ice and snowstorm. I heard they got like 10 inches of snow, but in between that, they had periods of moderate to heavy freezing rain. If you look closely, you can see some of these trees just still leaning over uh, given the weight of the ice accumulation. Now they're dealing with a strong temperature inversion just above the surface, so it's keeping low cloudiness and fog. You have all that moisture from last week's storm, and so it's just the perfect ingredient to create these low clouds and fog that'll persist. Temperature 10, 10 degrees above zero uh, midweek. McGrath and the surrounding areas had temperatures down around 40 below. Well, as we go further east across the Alaska Range, up the Matanusik uh, Valley, Sheep Mountain, beautiful clear skies, 12 degrees, at least you got clear conditions there. Not super cold given this time of year. And then as we come down along the Panhandle, those cold outflow northeasterly winds, Twin Island, which is on the other side of Metlakatla, you can see the chop on the water, those northeast outflow winds coming up there from uh, the area. Uh, up above, I'm trying to remember the specific, specific location, but anyways, windy and cold, 23 degrees. There are winter, or I should say cold weather advisories for the Southern Panhandle tonight in a uh, Monday morning for wind chills as cold as zero to five above. So the most noteworthy advisories, uh, warnings we have, winter weather advisory here, Western Northern Seward Peninsula, including Teller, Wales, Shishmaref for an inch or two of snow and gusty winds, maybe as high as 40, 50 miles an hour. That is gonna be now into uh, tomorrow evening. And then up here, we have a blizzard warning. Conditions have yet to take off, but some stronger gustier winds. Not a lot of snow, just an inch or two of snowfall. But when you have winds gusting 50 to 60 miles an hour, there could be some areas there from Point Lay down to Point Hope that could experience near or blizzard conditions at times. And then here in the Southeast Panhandle, uh, wrangle down through Ketchikan, uh, Metlakatla, Craig, Klawak. Those areas could see wind chills as cold as zero to five above tonight because we still have the cold uh, drainage winds coming through these various channels and gaps in the mountains. And again, temperatures should though moderate a bit here in the week ahead. It's still gonna be cold below normal temperatures, but not as cold as what we've experienced here this weekend. And then relatively quiet weather out here across the Aleutians. So uh, things going on in the sky. I don't know if you had a chance. Uh, skies were clear across many areas. You may have noticed the planet Venus next to the waxing crescent moon yesterday evening is when the two were closest to each other. This evening, you'll notice uh, uh, that uh, Venus is uh, kind of a bit more above the crescent moon. And so this conjunction technically still continuing, but very easily uh, spotted if you step out and look toward the southwest evening sky after sunset. You'll also maybe notice as it gets a little darker 
Uh, below the crescent moon, you'll see an orangish yellow star. That's uh, the planet uh, Saturn. And then we have a coronal hole allowing for a little stronger solar wind that's up around 600 kilometers per second right now. Could trigger a minor geomagnetic storm tonight into Monday, which could enhance the high latitude aurora. So keep your eyes peeled. The, the quiet form auroras could maybe get enhanced a bit tonight or especially early on uh, Monday morning. First quarter moon is coming up Wednesday, February 5th, and full moon in, uh, this month will be on February 12th. Also wanted to quick show you these this is from the Alaska Center for uh, Climate uh, Policy and Assessment. These numbers indicate for the month of January, you take the high and low temperatures for these given stations and you average them and compare them to the 30-year average that go back to uh, the early 90s through 2020. Look at these anomalies. Everywhere in the state, temperatures were above normal, but what's most remarkable is we had a couple of cold spells back around the new year, and then again just this past uh, mid-late week. And even despite that, temperatures around Fairbanks average 14 to 14 and a half degrees above normal, even areas along the Elkan border over toward Eagle, 40 mile gold country as much as 15 to 17 degrees above normal. And then even the, one of the cooler uh, <laughs> readings, just three degrees above normal here, uh, like Point Hope down toward uh, St. Lawrence Island. Uh, Anchorage area averaged about 10, almost 10 degrees above normal. And even in through the southeast panhandle, uh, down here in the south, the least uh, departure from normal, plus two and a half to three and a half degrees above normal. But remarkable, the entire state uh, having December average or, or January average above normal. We'll have to see what happens with February because Combined with uh, December, that could uh, end up being one of the warmer uh, winters we've seen on record. So looking at the satellite imagery, we have surface high pressure here. We have those north, northeasterly outflow winds coming down here across the panhandle, pouring out of the northeastern gulf and coastal areas of the panhandle. You can see that in the pattern. There's a low down here south of Vancouver Island. You can see the the kind of the convective nature of the showers, the streaks here in the clouds. To the west though, this is where the main storm track is. Here's a little stronger low that's working its way along uh, eastern Russia and the frontal system ahead of it. Not especially strong, but still strong enough. It's pulling uh, moist air northward that's relatively mild. And so this is the way it looks as of this afternoon. Could call it a cold front, an occluded front. The thing is this is gonna be in the process of weakening as it comes uh, eastward. And that low will take a track and kind of split up to the north and east. This high is a, war a surface reflection of the strong mid and upper level ridge that lies over uh, this uh, Alaska Peninsula, southwest, south central interior. That's why we have all that moisture is trapped on the west and north side of the Alaska Range through the especially middle Yukon Valley and the upper Kuskokwim Valley. That's why you're socked in with those low clouds and fog, and that's just not gonna turn over. That's a very stable condition, whereas this is more Arctic high. And even though the coldest of air is shifting east southeastward, uh, at least temperatures are gonna moderate. Uh, it won't be quite as cold sub-zero readings here over the eastern interior. And as we go uh, through uh, and by midweek, we'll definitely see some uh, a little better temperatures there, though still below normal for the panhandle. Now, late tonight into early Monday morning, we still have the high up around 1055 here over northwest Canada. We have the front coming up toward the west coast, toward the Bering Strait and along the lower Yukon Delta beginning to weaken the low. Kind of one little area of slipping north. There is milder air that's come all the way up along uh, the Chukchi Sea coast and uh, east of Utqiagvik. And then on Monday afternoon, here we have what's left of that, that low that was down here in the western bearing with the weakening front. But along this, there's still some gusty winds. That's why we have that blizzard warning for Point Lay to Cape, uh, or Point uh, Lay to po uh, Point Hope. And then we have uh, winter weather advisory for the northern western part of the Seward Peninsula. And into Tuesday, things still getting easterly offshore flow here in the panhandle, still below normal temperatures, still in this region, should be fairly clear. Uh, areas though, north and west of the Alaska Range still potentially trap that moisture trap beneath the inversion related to this 
uh, mid and upper level high. And then this system weakening here along the west coast, but there'll be another low trying to come up to the north and east as we go through the week. So temperature wise, morning lows instead of 40s or 30s below coming upward to uh, Yukon Flats, about 17 below still below zero, upper Tanana Valley, and areas of the Copper River Basin, Gulf Canada could be down around 20 below. Notice the panhandle, some single digits and teens, you still will have breezes in areas, that's why that uh, cold weather advisory is in effect for the southern panhandle for those wind chills of zero to five above tonight into mid-morning on Monday. And then to the west, temperatures will stop at or just above freezing from Nome south along the lower Yukon coast. And as we go into Monday afternoon, Temperatures, highs only in lower mid-20s panhandle. Still some sub-zero readings within the uh, mid-upper Copper River Basin and Yukon Flats, but getting closer to zero. And then along the, the, the west coast, we have highs of 38 at Nome, 35 at Wales, 33 up there to Point Hope, 37 at Savunga, lower 40s down here along the Alaska Peninsula, False Pass, Cold Bay down toward uh, Dutch Harbor and then lows Tuesday morning still some sub-zero readings in the upper Copper River Basin, upper Tanana, along the Alcan border, Yukon Flats, but again not extremely cold, not the kind of cold you can traditionally get at this time of year in early mid-February can be some very cold readings, but at least the high that's over here is not especially cold and I said the colder air is shifting southeastward across Canada. And then on Tuesday, we expect highs maybe back up around 30-ish. A few areas getting a near or just above freezing in the panhandle. Shouldn't be quite as windy. And then daytime highs, we could see single digits above zero. Arctic Village, Yukon Flats, Northway uh, into the upper Copper River Basin. And then back along the west coast, we have readings still around or a little bit above freezing all the way from the Seward Peninsula down along the uh, Yukon Delta and temperatures still lower 40s through the southern part of the Alaska Peninsula back into the eastern Aleutians. So what's changed in terms of the six to 10 day temperature outlook? Not really much at all. This pattern kind of holding uh, up until probably at least uh, Valentine's. The coldest temperatures below normal temperatures, the greatest probability will be over the panhandle and then the mildest temperatures compared to normal readings will be uh, here along the west coast, but especially uh, the Yukon, Kuskokwim uh, deltas uh, from Kuskokwim down through Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula into the eastern Aleutians stand to see temperatures continue to average above normal. And then with that kind of pattern, it would imply there's still potential for just general high pressure to dominate over this region. So that means below normal precipitation, drier than normal, extending up into areas of the east central interior, including Fairbanks, eastern Alaska range, southeast Wrangell, St. Elias, and then especially down here through the panhandle. Below normal precipitation is expected February 8th through the 12th, with maybe precipitation averaging a bit above normal from uh, the Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Aleutians, up along areas of the southwest and west coast to about the Bering Strait. But at least in that time frame of February 8th through the 12th, we're not anticipating any really wet major storms that would bring heavy uh, rain or snow or high winds. But again, stay, stay tuned because again, this pattern is generally going to hold here for the next couple of weeks.